I'm glad that you're uh, with us today. You know, I just got to share something with you. You know, every, every year, last Sunday is always the hardest Sunday of the year, time change. And I'm so glad, I don't know how to say this, but that, that when that's over, because when I'm here, I don't know what I'm saying, and I don't think you know what I'm saying, and then half the church isn't here. So anyway, so uh, we're just glad you're with us today. And, uh, you know, if you are visiting, we're a laid-back church. We love the Lord. We, we preach his truth and his grace and uh, his hope. So we're here today, and whatever you're going through, I want you to know whatever you walk through that door with that Jesus wants to put in your heart today. Uh, don't give up. Uh, and by faith... If we trust him enough, he always, always wins. Let's pray. Father, we come to you today. Lord, we're grateful <clears throat> that we can open your word. It is so unique. There's no other book like it because it is you. It is your word. Lord, forgive me in whatever it might be that I can just be a clean vessel. Lord, as you speak today through the power of your spirit. Lord, encourage those today, the story of Joshua and Rahab, and uh, Father, we'll always give you the praise, in Jesus' name, amen. We're going to look at the same battle today with, different, with two different kinds of faith. We're going to look at the battle of, of Joshua and also the battle that Rahab faced. You know, I want to ask you a question. You know, I've asked you this before in a different way, whether or not... Uh, <clears throat> you've ever gotten a speeding ticket, and I'm sure many of you had. But if you've ever gotten a ticket, you don't need to raise your hand. We're not here to embarrass you. But have you ever gotten a ticket going through a red light? That's the question. And here's the question with that. It's always a fine line, isn't it? Okay, there it is. I'm in a hurry or whatever's going on. How long is this going to stay there? Uh, am I going to make? Can I get through? Uh, uh, should I stop? Should I go? You know, that's exactly how I think we feel sometimes in our faith. Should I go? Should I wait? What am I supposed to do? I don't know, Lord. I need some help here. And I think all of us at one time or another, uh, if not the course of our life, there's always this question. Should I go or should I wait? And I want to look at two people today. We're going to look at Joshua. If you don't know, Joshua was one of the greatest warriors in the Old Testament. As far as I know, he never lost a battle uh, that he faced in the Old Testament. And if they <clears throat> did look like it was going to lose, so they did. They pulled back. The Lord told them what was wrong. They went and defeated the enemy. In the book of Joshua, there were some 31 battles that he faced, won all of them. And then the Bible tells us the land rested from war. His name actually means what we get in the name Jesus. It's a forerunner. To, and what it means is to save, to deliver. And that's what Joshua's name means. The other person involved in this story is Rahab. Rahab lived in a city called Jericho. If you're going to go to the promised land, who the land was promised to the children of Israel, they crossed over the Jordan after wandering 40 years in the desert. If you're going to go in the promised land after they crossed the Jordan, the city that they had to get through, get this now, was the most fortified city in all the promised land. And I really believe this. If some of you have faced unbelievable battles in your life, and many times the greatest battle is the first one. And reason being is the Lord wants to build a reservoir of faith in our life. She was a prostitute. The Bible tells us that we're going to look at in a minute that she lived actually, from what we understand in the Bible, the only house that was in this way in Jericho. Jericho was so powerful and such a fortified city that it was said that you could race two chariots on the top of, of, the, on the, top of the actual walls. Two chariots could go around in, in, a, in a race. All of the land knew of Jericho, the powerful warriors that they had and, and everything that was in there. Rahab, again, I want to say again, she was a harlot. She was a prostitute. But yet we're going to see how God saved her family 
and what he did with her life. I, I want you to know today, uh, I don't, it doesn't matter at all whether you're watching on YouTube or you're here today, where you are in your life, Jesus can save you and he can change your life. Let's look at Hebrews chapter 11 and actually which is called the, the chapter of faith in the Bible, Hebrews chapter 11, verses 30 and 31. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they were encircled for seven days. By faith, the harlot Rahab did not perish with those who did not believe when she had received the spies with peace. Now, I'm going to quickly turn. We don't do that. I usually try and explain what's going on there, but it's pretty self-explanatory. I want you to go to the book of Joshua. Let me give you a little background. In Joshua chapter 2, we're going to look at verses 13 in a minute. If you're going to be blessed in your life, if I'm going to be blessed in my life, we're always going to be tested in our faith. And we don't like that. We, don't, we, we hedge on that and we wish things would go a little bit easier. But I want you to know there's always a blessing at the end of the test. God doesn't tease you. God doesn't forsake you. There's a test. When, if you're going through a test right now, know that you will be blessed. And in this story, we see that the two spies were the two spies that went originally went into the promised land. The reason why they had to wander in the desert all those years, the other ten spies didn't believe. God says all this generation will die out, and I'm quickly giving you an uptake. There's so many stories in this. All that generation will die out till you can get in the promised land, what I've promised you. But you did not believe me. I want you to believe Jesus today for whatever's on your heart. I want you to believe him and know that he's going to come through. Tells us the two spies, it changed. It changed now after all these years. Now they're going back in. But they're going back in in a different way. They have been empowered to know that God has worked through them, almost in a way that they were going in as two witnesses just as much as two spies. When they go in, the Bible tells us they're going in to see what God had promised them. Now, they already know that, but I have to ask myself the question, you do too, well, if, if they went in years ago, and this is going on again, and they, you know, why do they have to go back again if God says, you know, he's already given it to them? He wants them to hear something that's so important that will encourage them for the battle they're going to face. I want you to know as you go through your testing, whatever it might be, I, I want to encourage you that through that time, God's going to give you a word. He's going to give you a word in such a way that at the beginning of that trial that you're going to hold on to, whatever it might be, just for you. Nobody else in here. You're going to get something different than the person next to you because you're going through something different. But the power of the Holy Spirit is so amazing. If we're willing to trust and believe, Joshua's going in one way, Rahab is coming another way. You say, Dallas, what do you mean? Well, let me explain this, and then we'll read passage. Joshua is going in as a warrior. He knows what he's got to do. He has got to go. He knows this is what they're supposed to do. God's telling him he's going to fight this battle. He's going to win. Rahab, on the other hand, has to wait. So here's what I want you to get today. Here's what we've got to understand in our faith. There'll be some times in your life that you're wondering, what is going on? Lord, what do I do? Well, we're going to find out what you need to do in a minute. I'm not going to tell you right now, but we're going to find out. Look at Joshua chapter 2. Joshua chapter 2, and verses 13 and through 21. Now, we pick up the story to where there's probably a few thousand people that live within the walls of this city. A lot of warriors are there, a lot of mighty men and their families. They go in and they walk through the gates they're dressed in such a way they're dressed to look like the people that day that live there. Somehow the king finds out 
but they're two spies in the land. So they go to Rahab's house, and I believe they probably went there because they knew her house was on the wall. If there's any way they're going to get out, they're going to have to jump over that wall. But now they've been found out. The king's army comes to her house, which is on the wall. They're there. She's hid them on the roof. It's like if you take a bunch of hay and you put over somebody on the roof, that's the kind of roofs that they had. They're actually on the roof when the enemy is right below them. That's, that's us today. That's you and me. We're right there. The enemy's right there. And he wants to take you out. And he wants to take me out. Rahab's talking to them. As she talks to the king and the warriors, she says, oh, yeah, those two spies, they were here, but they left. They were here and left and took off. Now, I'm going to ask you something, or I'm going to share something with you because you're thinking this, and I don't know the answer to it, but I'm going to say it anyways. You're saying she's going to tell them that they're not there, but they are there. She lied. Now, Husbands, this doesn't give you any, any ammo to lie to your wives about anything, okay? That's not what I'm saying. I don't know why. There's some things I don't know. I could give you some the- great theological explanation and kind of go down through it and kind of work my through I don't know. But God gave her that she could lie in that situation to save the lives of these two spies. She tells them they're gone. They leave. They said they already left the city. If you pursue them now, you'll get them. She goes to the roof and she says, this is what I've told the warriors that were here. They come down off the roof and she says, wait a minute, wait a minute. And this is where it gets good. She says, I know who you are. That's why I hid you on the roof. Do the people around us in the world know who we are? When they really know who we are, we will be blessed. See, by us not being ashamed of the gospel, us being true to who we are as believers, and we're all in different situations every day, as Ben's going to speak on next week, speak the truth in love. What I want you to know today, the reason why they were saved in that situation, this is what she said, and we're going to read it. I've heard of your God. And what he does. That's why I put you on the roof. Do people know who our God is today, who we serve? Even family members, even other people. That we live in such a way that we're going to be blessed in the secular world that you and we have to go into every day and not be ashamed of the gospel? Listen as the story picks up in Joshua chapter 2. Joshua chapter 2, verses 13. They've come down off the roof. The story and the narrative continues in this way. I've done this for you, and this is what she says. Spare my fathers, or my father, my mother, my brothers, my sisters, and all that they have. In other words, their children, the little ones. Deliver our lives from death. So the men answered her, Our lives for yours, if none of you tell this business of ours, and it shall be when the Lord has given us the land that we will deal kindly and truly with you. Then she let them down by the rope to the window, for her house was on the city wall. Notice they say it again. She dwelt on the wall. And she said to them, get to the mountain, test the pursuers, meet them, Hide there three days until the pursuers have returned. After you, you may go your way. Now, here's my question with this. How did she know to say that? How did she know that they were going to go out there and pursue them for three days? I don't think she knew. God gave her that word. There are people that you're going to come along with when you're going through and you don't know whether to go or to stop. You don't know what to do, but the Spirit is going to actually, the Holy Spirit is actually going to speak to you when he brings others along your pathway. And they're going to speak words to you. They don't even know what they're saying. But because they know you're a believer and they know who you are, 
something God puts in them to say, and you know whether to whether to go or whether to stop. But it all depends on us whether or not we are living like we should as a believer. The story continues. And they said, get to the mountain lest the pursuers meet you. Hide there three days until the pursuers have returned, and afterwards you may go your way. So the men said to her, we will be blameless of this oath of yours which you have made Swear us, unless we come unto this land, you bind the line of scarlet cord in the window through which you let us down. Unless you bring your father, your mother, your brothers, and all your father's household to to your own home. So shall it be that whoever goes outside the doors of your house into the street, his blood shall be on his own head and we will be guiltless whoever is with you in the house his blood shall be on our head if a hand is laid on him if you tell this business of ours then we will be free from your oath which you made us swear then she said according to your word so be it she sent them away and they departed and she bound the scarlet cord in the window why did she do all that Let's go back. We're not going to go over all the story today. What I want to bring you up to speed. What I said a minute ago, I have heard of your God. We all tremble in this city because we know the miracles that he's done. Are we living in such a way in the world that people have a godly fear of who our God is? You know why I don't think so today? Because we as pastors, we have churches, have failed, have failed to live our life. I'm not yelling and screaming, telling somebody they're dying, going to hell. No, just to live in such a way that there is a fear. They know that we live in a different way and there is hope. The Bible, God's word says, Rahab received the spies with peace. Don't be afraid of whoever you're going into in this world this week. When God is with you, you will be received with peace. Don't be intimidated. God, or the devil's going to try to tell you something else. I have heard of your God, and that's why she did what she did. And listen, this is what they said. And this is how we've so, this is not we, this is how society has so twisted this today. And I want you to get this because this is what the world does. First, let me talk about that scarlet. Yarn. It's like if you take a long yarn skirt, uh, uh, scarf and, it, and one that's bound and, and sewn really well, and it's just long. That's how she let them down. Twice it says, and we're going to get to this, her house was built into the wall. Put the scarlet, the red that looks like blood, in the wall. Now, this is what happens in the world today. Do you know that... that She's a, she's a prostitute. We've said that. The world today, if you've ever heard of the red light district, right? And they get that from this story. The red, instead of the red scarlet, which it used to be years ago, <clears throat> they've turned into a red light in that district, and that's where the prostitutes hang out. I want to tell you today that has been twisted and turned because that's not the real truth of that. See, the devil, see what he does? He takes something that is so perfected, so true and so true, so real that he can twist this word to make you do something and believe something that's not real. He comes as an angel of light, and he might be doing that to you today. What that actually was a symbol of, go back to the Passover. Do you know before they entered in war in the city of Jericho, they celebrated the Passover. We know it's now the new covenant, which we do here and which we did a couple weeks ago in in the church. What they were celebrating was the blood. What was that blood representative? A sacrificial lamb that was prepared, that had to die, and to know that the, the, the death angel would go in Egypt, and they were freed. When the death angel came through Egypt and they saw the blood on the doorpost, they were then covered by the blood. And anybody in that house was saved. You see the parallel? You see the picture? You see the scarlet? That scarlet 
scarf or rope is a representative of the blood of Jesus Christ. It was a forerunner. Anyone that stays in this house with you, Rahab, because you believed in our God and who he is today, they will be saved. Do you see the responsibility that we have as parents, as brothers and sisters, as grandparents, to be a witness and a testimony? Anyone that's in your house will be saved. We remember now, she had to wait. She had that in the window. And she was waiting and waiting. She had to wait. I don't know how long, but she had to wait. Joshua had to go. He was pursuing. They were preparing for battle. They knew what they had to do. That's our life. I don't know what it is. I don't know why it's like this, but I'm here to tell you. You might get frustrated. Sometimes you've got to wait. And you got to wait, and he's like, Lord, how long is this going to take? Always see the blood. Always know that you were saved by grace through Jesus Christ. There's a purpose for your life. He doesn't tease you. He doesn't forsake you. Something he's going to do great with your life. you got to wait. At the same time, you might be in a position in that knowing there's that light. Do I go? Do I wait? I don't know. I don't know. But I know this. Faith comes by hearing hearing by the word of God. You're going to know what to do because this book is so real and so true because it's God's word. And all you've got to do is pick it up and the Lord's going to tell you whether or not to wait or go. We're going to finish in just a minute, but let me share this. Can you imagine? So Joshua's got to go, a mighty warrior. He's got to go to all the people. He meets with the Lord of hosts. He, meet, he actually sees Jesus in, in, in the flesh, if you will, he has this meeting in the desert. And Jesus is standing there with a sword. And he says, are you with us or against us? And Jesus says to Joshua, you are on holy ground. And immediately he knew he was in the presence of the Lord and he fell flat on his face. And Jesus told him, this is what you're going to do. I want you to know, Jesus will always tell you what to do. Don't get ahead of him. He's going to tell you what to do. He's going to tell you to go or to wait. We're either Joshua or Rahab. I don't know which one you are right now, but sometimes it changes in this life. Same battle. Continues on. So here's what, here's the kind of battle that they've got to face as a mighty warrior. He says, the Lord tells Joshua, here's what you're going to do. You're going to go around the city six days. And on the seventh day, you're going to go around it seven times, and you're all going to shout, and the walls are going to fall down. Now, can you imagine Joshua hearing that, knowing he's going to have to tell all the children of Israel, hey, this is what the Lord's going to do. This is why he did something which is so important. You can go back and read the story. But he said something so important, and don't miss this today. He says this. He says, for the six days that you walk around, I don't want you to say anything. Not a word. I don't want you to say one word to each other. I don't want you to say one word out loud. Why did he say that? Why did God tell Joshua that? You know why? Well, here we are again today. It's day three. What do you think, Bob? I don't know. I see. Here we go again. They're throwing stuff down us, you know, from the city wall and water and everything else, and we don't know what else is going to happen the next day. And, you know, it's day four. Well, what do you think? I don't know. I don't think I'm coming tomorrow. All right? (laughs) Right? Don't you? We do that to each other. Don't tell me that you don't do that. You get on the phone. You get on Facebook. You get whatever you do, and you discourage each other because of what you say. You got to be quiet sometimes in the middle of battle because you got to focus. They go around once, twice, three times, four times, five times, six times, seventh day. Seventh day they go around. I remember now, Rahab's up there and she's waiting. You know, anybody that was part of her family could have not believed and they could have died. But they all went in her house on the wall. 
Notice it says twice on the wall. Now, this is what's so important. Is This happens. Now, here we get it. The warriors come in. He says, on that seventh day, is the seventh time you go around, the band, the trumpets are going to sound. And when you hear that sound, and the last one you hear that doesn't stop, I want everybody, the thousands and thousands of wars in that are with us, as the children of Israel, I want you to shout as loud as you can. And when you do that, the wall's coming down. They do. And the wall starts to come down. Now, the most important part is this I want you to get for Rahab. At any point in time when the wall was coming down, she could have given up. And no, the wall was coming down and she could have gotten out of the house. See, this is where we're at. Right at your breaking point. Don't miss this. Right at your breaking point, you and I want to give up. And God's saying, you're so close. Everything has crumbled around you. But I'm right here. And you're going to be saved. Just believe me. Just trust me. God spoke to her through God's people and said, you will be saved all in your house. It is such a miracle to think all the walls came down, but can you imagine you're you're going into battle as the children of Israel, and you're seeing just this one section of all the walls, one section with that that red scarlet rope there, and it's just standing, it's just there amidst the rubble. Everything could be destroyed around you and me. God always wins, and you will be saved. And you know what will happen? God's going to bless you so much. Either way, Joshua, did you have to believe, like, well, we're supposed to go around this and do that? What? Lord, this doesn't make sense. We're warriors. Or if you're Rahab, a prostitute, wait a minute. Here it is. Is does God, is he really going to save me for where I have, for things I've done in my life? What's happened? Absolutely. If you believe him, faith comes by hearing. Trust, trust by the word of God. What's the reward? And we close with this today. Let's go back to Hebrews, that same chapter in verse 6. Faith, without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Just because we believe who he is and I believe that we do but we have a hard time believing in the midst of our trial and what we're going through that we're actually going to be blessed. We can't see it. Too much has happened. Do you know if you read the book of Matthew, the very first chapter, you know, the in the lineage? Unbelievable. She would have never believed this in a million years. Rahab is in the first chapter of the book of Matthew. You know why? Because she was a great, great, great grandmother of Jesus Christ. (laughs) A prostitute. Worthless to most people because she so believed and had a godly fear. Look how God blessed her. Joshua was successful in all the wars and all his life because he believed when he went into the land, God says, I'll always be with you. I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. You will be successful. Rahab, I want you to stay, but you will be successful. I don't know where you're at today. You say, I don't know what to do, Dallas. I I don't know. I don't know where I'm at. I don't know how to go. go I'm telling you, the Lord, his spirit through his word will show you. He really will where you are. Never forget, I've been thinking so much the last couple weeks, and we're going to close with that the, the church will be five years old, which I can't believe, in just a couple weeks. And about a year and a half before the church started, 
I would still have funerals and do different things in ministry, but because of what everything I've been through, I, it, so many people would come up and ask me, Dad, she's going to start a church. Like, Why don't you start a church? Why don't you know? And I'd be asked this so many times, and I'd say, I'm not ready. I'm not ready. I'm just not ready. I just knew. And then about a year before the church started, <clears throat> I shared with this, I think, last year, I, and I just want to share it again today, I had a very successful businessman in the community. He's home with the Lord now. But he says, hey, Dow, he says, I want to meet with you. Can we, you got a little time to talk? I said, yeah. He says, uh, I get together with him. He says, hey, uh, I found this building, nice building, the whole thing. He goes, uh, I'm just going to buy it for you. Go start a church. <laughs> I said, well, he said, yeah. I said, I'm not ready. He said, what? He said, what are you talking about? I said, he says, I'm, I'm going to buy you a bill. I, I can tell you where I'm. This is not important. Of the story. He said, I'm going to buy you this building. I'm going to pay for the whole thing, and you start to, whatever you want to do, I'm not going to get away. Just do it. You need to be doing this. I call him, call him by his first say, I'm not ready. I can't do it. Why was I waiting? The Holy Spirit hadn't told me to do this yet. So I'm here to tell you today, I'm no different than you. He's going to tell you to wait and to wait and to wait. Now, here's the end of the story. When Jim and Lisa came to me over five years ago, the beginning of January, and finally, after some of you are here today, had talked to me about starting his church, starting his church, I'm not ready, I'm not ready. <laughs> and finally, after two years of all that, we go to dinner, they, we talk about a few things. They said, Dennis, what's it going to take? What's it going to take? We'll help, we'll do whatever it takes. And they so stayed so true to that. And all of you that have volunteered and all of you have helped, they said, we'll do whatever. And I, don't, I can't explain it to you. The Lord just said, it's time. Do it. And he has. Now, here's the key. Here's what I want you to get. If I had said yes to that church building, first of all, I wasn't ready. But it, you know that the inside of it is not even half this size. Beautiful building. We could have it been fine. But the Lord gave us this to what he's going to do next. And that's where you are today. He's going to do it. But I want you to know sometimes you got to wait and you got to wait. And it can be so tempting to go. But through his word that is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. He's going to show you exactly what to do. And most of the time it's going to be wait. And we don't want to hear that. And then all of a sudden, before you know it, it's time. So I don't know where you're at today as we close. But I want you to know, if we wait on him, whether you're Rahab or whether you're Joshua, he's going to tell you to wait. He's going to tell you to go. Both of them won. Both of them won. Different battles. Same faith. I want you to know today, wherever you are, you're fighting a different battle than the person next to you. You're going to win. You're going to be somehow like Joshua Rahab, like she would have never, ever, ever believed she would have been blessed like she was to be in the lineage of Jesus Christ. You will never, ever believe what God wants to do in your life. But if you wait, you trust him, and you follow his path, you're going to look back someday and you're going to say, Lord, I don't even know how to thank you. You did it all. And we received the blessings from it. So some of us today might have to stay in that house. And some of us have to charge forward. Where are you at? I don't know. But the Lord will tell you. Let's pray. So our heads are bowed today. I want you to think about right where you're at in whatever you're battling right now. It could be something with your kids, something with your grandkids. It could be something in your marriage. It could be something at work. I don't know what it is. But I know that, that the Lord is with you. Rahab saw Joshua's spies. The Lord was with them. 
through the blood of Jesus Christ and the cross of Calvary, he saved you. And he's with you. And he's going to show you exactly what you need to do. Maybe you've got to wait a little longer. You don't want to hear that. If you're not sure what to do next, then the Lord's telling you to wait. And he'll put in your spirit's time to move. So I don't know what it is. I don't know where you're at. But I challenge you to stay in his word. And he's going to do it. If you're here today, you're watching on YouTube or you're here and you don't know Jesus is your Savior and, 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 and you know who God is and you have heard of Jesus Christ, I want you to know that same Jesus can save you and give you eternal life in heaven. And through his shed blood on the cross of Calvary, through his ber- perfect blood shed for you, you could be a prostitute, you could be anything, you could be a business person. I don't know who, I don't know who, where you've come from. But Jesus died for all of us and gives hope to all. All you've got to do is by faith, trusting. You say, what did Jesus, just pray this prayer. Jesus, forgive me a sinner. I believe that you're God's son and you shed your perfect blood on the cross of Calvary for me and I ask you to come into my heart. Father, if there's someone here today, they want to accept you as their savior, Lord, whoever they are, may they know we always give an invitation. May they come today. Father, we thank you that we serve a true and a living God, and you never leave us. You never forsake us. You always show us the way to go. Lord, may we have decisions today. We ask it all as Ben leads us in your name, in Jesus' name. Amen.